I feel like this video might be extra long because I waited a couple weeks to film it so I've accumulated some more favorites. So zero intro, let's just get into my favorites for the month of July and the first week of August. My number one favorite in the skincare category and of my entire July, summer, potentially year, although the year is only half over, is the Infiore facial I had at the International Orange Spa in Marin when I was there several weeks ago. I referenced it in one of my recent videos and said that I would talk a little bit more about it, so I do want to stay concise, but also just gush about how amazing of an experience it was. So International Orange has two locations in San Francisco and in Marin and they offer a signature facial and then they do an Infiore specific facial. It involved the Infiore 424 method, lots of steam, extractions. That was the first time I had ever had extractions done. Then there was a, a sort of layering of different masks, a really intense brightening mask, and then they end with a technique that is specific to International Orange called the Slap, Tap, and Roll Massage. It was like super incredible. The purpose of that technique is to sculpt and tone the skin and bring luminosity to it. And I kid you not, I felt like I had had a facelift for probably at least three days after. You, There really is a noticeable toning and lifting and firming to the skin and the face. It was like truly, truly incredible. So in short, without blabbing on too much, it was just the most incredible beauty treatment experience I've ever had. I feel so fortunate that I got to have that experience. I will definitely be going back, potentially in the winter with my sister if I make a trip out west, and if not then, then definitely next summer I intend to go back. It's going to be like a destination spot for me. I'm so obsessed. I mean, there's more that I could say, but I want to just kind of cut myself off. But that segues really nicely into the skincare that I have been... I mean, it's really been mostly the last two weeks, so I don't know if it's fair to call it like July favorites, but recent favorites, we'll just say. I mean, I've been a huge fan of Infiore for years now, but going to International Orange and having that facial just totally revived, revamped, amped up my obsession. It's literally the only skincare I want to use, which doesn't really bode well for my channel because I kind of have to try other things out um, if I want to keep doing this, but literally all I've been wanting to do is reach for my Infiore stuff. If you watched that travel skincare, what was in my travel skincare and makeup bags, I showed you a couple new Infiore products that have gotten added to my routine. And I have to say there is something so nice about using multiple products in a range all at once. It just really contributes, I feel, to the overall experience of the brand. So I've been, most nights I will do Lustra and Treat. And I've been getting more into doing a really dedicated facial massage every night, doing like the full 424. I mean, a lot of times I just get lazy and I'll sort of slap on a balm cleanser and you know, take it off and call it a day, but really taking the time to do the four minutes of Lustra massage, the two minutes of treat, and then usually I'll do a steam with a washcloth and then finish with cold water splashes. You just kind of feel like a new person after you take the time to do that. Then I showed this in a, re a relatively recent beauty habit order. It's the Infiore Vital Toner in the Traveler. Um, the, the mist on this is quite intense. It really shoots out in a very intense stream. So I tend to spray directly into my palm and then like spread pat on my face. So I've been doing that for toner and then my serum and moisture steps have been the Fleur Vibrant Solution Botanique and the Complex de Fleur Cellular Renewal Complex. So actually this is a follow-up question conversation I would like to have with either or both Jeannie from Beauty Heroes and Julie who's the founder of Infiore because they recommend that you do your serum after your oil which I've never really heard of but their layering of products suggestions are very different than anything I've ever encountered so for them you would remove makeup cleanse with the 424 go in with an oil go in with a serum 
and then you would end on top with a toner. I think they say you can also do toner before the oil, but they always recommend doing a toning step after all your skincare to further hydrate and lock things in, I guess. So I have been experimenting with mixing up the order in which I apply serum and oil. Yeah, I, I just feel like I'm blabbing so much and this video is gonna be incredibly long. So I don't think I'll be doing much more by way of skincare until the fall. I probably will do an updated fall skincare routine and maybe I'll talk a little more extensively about the Infiore stuff because my skin has honestly required very little for the last couple of months. Um, it just has been pretty balanced, so I haven't been able to layer a ton of stuff or use a lot of products, but I have a feeling that'll change when the season changes. Moving right along to makeup. So following with the theme of my skin just not needing very much, which is like kind of it's both awesome and also both frustrating from a product junkie perspective because I'm like just want to use products. <laughs> um, but as far as makeup, with the exception of a tinted moisturizer like Suntegrity and a minimal amount of a cream product like RMS Uncover Up, I have been reaching more for 22 versus shade 11, which I also have. Despite my best efforts to not be in the sun and always wear sun protection, I do find that uh, I do get maybe half a shade darker in the summertime. So 22 has just been absolutely perfect for covering up any sort of pink that will come through in my cheeks or around my nose or chin, but like very minimal. And then I've been abhorring putting like any other cream products on my face. Like I just can't handle it. It's been upper 80s, lower 90s, and just humid and disgusting in Boston. I was like still reaching for cream highlights and I just, I looked greasy and I never thought that I, I mean, as a former dry skinned person, I like could never get enough cream and moisture on my face, but my skin has just changed really dramatically over the last year, year and a half, I would say. Yes, my makeup in general has just been really minimal. So the things that I've been reaching for, this is probably one of the only times that I will reach for this product when my skin is in this sort of shape, is my RMS Unpowder. I have just the translucent version. And so this is definitely the most intense shine control setting powder I have. I also have a Trish McAvoy translu pressed translucent setting powder, and I have the Hourglass ambient lighting powders. So I'll do those as well, but if I really um, want like mattifying and shine control, I will reach for this and I'll just apply it under my eyes, around my nose and chin with my Wayne Goss number no. two and it's perfect and it lasts all day. So I have been getting a lot of use out of this. And then I haven't even been wanting to use my RMS Buriti bronzer. I used it while I was in California because it was the weather was so nice there. For face color, like bronzer blush, I haven't been really been wearing blush. I'm still trying to use up my last um, little bit of the Studio 78 bronzer in shade number two. So I'll just do a really, it's actually like what I'm wearing today, just a really light dusting kind of on my cheekbones and my temple, nose, chin, and I'll take it down my neck like really lightly. And then I don't have any pressed highlighters that are from Eco Brands. So I've been reaching a lot for my Charlotte Tilbury highlight, which is honestly really pretty and subtle for an everyday highlight in um, a powder version. So normally, you know, I'd be reaching for my Modern Minerals or the Well People or Living Luminizer. I just like, I can't guys. I look like a grease pit if I've, if I've been wearing that lately. So every day it's just been a dusting of the Studio 78 and the Charlotte Tilbury highlight and that's it. Um, so for eyes, I still, like I am wearing winged liner for the occasion of this video, but I have not been wearing it like at all um, since I had that really bad eye flare up, which is n at this point 90, 95 to 98% gone, which I'm very, very happy about. But it's still, I want it to just be totally normal uh, before I wear liquid liner with any more regularity. So my everyday eye look has been just a very conservative 
line of the lower waterline with the Antonym Eye Pencil in Noir. I'll just do it like very lightly, three quarters of the way on the waterline. Then I've been reaching a lot for my By Terry Ombre Black Star in Misty Rock, and I will just run that right kind of over the waterline and lower lash line and like kind of smudge it in with my finger. Curl my eyelashes and throw some mascara on which I have graduated to doing. When my eye was really bad, I was not even wearing mascara. Now I'm kind of like back to wearing mascara and I've just been reaching most, I would say, for the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara, which I do like. It's more lengthening than the Too Faced Better Than Sex, which is the other one in my rotation. It This has been flaking on me a little bit, but yeah, I need more time to fully form thoughts on this and give feed, comparative feedback on it, I guess. So that's been eyes, and then I just thought I would mention, well, I have a couple more things. I thought I would mention the lip options I've been reaching for most over the last six weeks or so, and there's, they're not any surprises, but these are, have been my most worn everyday lip colors for summer, and for neutral, surprise, surprise, Bite Beauty Pecan, this is just like totally holy grail. NARS Cruella, which is probably, you wouldn't think of it to be a super summer specific lip color, but this formula, obviously not eco, but it's the performance of these, if you are a bold lip person during the day and you want to wear these to work and eat meals in public, <laughs> wearing a bold lip color, like it kind of doesn't get much better than this. They stay put. I have to touch up maybe once during the day. And they just don't move. I don't have to worry about how it getting all over my face. So, yes, Mysterious Red and Damned are on my list to get next of these. And then, of course, Mahalo Red My Lips. This is also, I mean, it's a little bit more uh, transferable, I guess, than the NARS Matte Lip Crayons, but it's not nearly as slippy as something like the Bite Beauty High Pigment Pencils. Those I find to be very difficult to wear during the day if you want to wear a bold lip color during the day, but this is, I find, to be just a beautiful, bold, daytime bold, and it's very easy to wear, and I just have gotten so much use out of it this summer. And then the last thing in the makeup category to touch on, even though it's pretty premature, I've only been using this product about a week and a half now, is the Glossier Boy Brow. I have this in the shade brown, and guys, I have been obsessed. I totally kind of understand what the hype is all about now with this. Everything I ever wanted in a brow pomade product, which I, tend to be pretty disappointed in. I have tried and returned the Surratt Beauty Brow Pomade. I tried the Jane Iredell one, it was like a really bad color match. Everything about this is incredible. It's a good price point. The ingredients are not bad. In fact, I think most Glossier makeup anyway rates around a two on EWG, so they're not explicitly eco, but they are as kind of a innovative, fresh, young, makeup brand. They are sort of cognizant of ingredients and toxicity without explicitly coming out and saying that they are, so I appreciate that. And if you are in the market for an amazing brow pomade, like try, just try it. It gives such good texture. I don't find that it leaves my brows like cr overly crunchy. Um, it stays in place all day. It's ashy. It's not warm. My only complaint would be that I find that I do have to wipe excess product off the wand. It does tend to accumulate a lot of product, um, which can kind of glob onto the brows, but that would be my only complaint, so like a huge rave. Okay, one quick hair thing to mention, and it's by the brand Innersense, and it's their inner piece whipped cream texturizer to create texture, separation, and definition. Uh, last month or a month and a half ago, Innersense was amazing and they sent me a box full of products to try because they knew how much I love the Pure Harmony Hair Bath Shampoo. So if you have that, if you have tried that product, this smells exactly like it. It has kind of that same um, sweet orange scent, which is really, really pleasant. I use this interchangeably with the John Masters Organics Hair Pomade, which is kind of like, it's a product I I bought a long time ago, very early on in my green beauty 
way and it's continued to be a product I really really like and so this sort of functions as a like a cream version of a pomade and what I like them for is on second or third day hair if I'm going to do like a top knot running this through my ends and kind of up the back um, is just a really nice way to get sort of additional hold and texture and to make a style just look a little bit better so I really really like this um, it it's it's nice because unlike the John Masters Organics hair pomade it doesn't leave my hair greasy it doesn't really leave a lot of residue in the hair which is really interesting it just kind of gives a little bit of grip and texture so um, if you can get your hands on a sample of this and are in the market for a texturizing product I think it's worth trying okay on to some lifestyle stuff of which I have a fair amount I've already been recording for 21 minutes <laughs> struggles okay I'm just gonna try and go quick because I want to tell you guys about this stuff I'm like excited about it okay my first lifestyle favorite is a new piece of jewelry in my life and it was actually my gift from my sister to me for being in her wedding and it's this absolutely beautiful dainty pearl necklace it's just a very thin delicate gold chain with a single pearl it's flat on one edge so it'll lay flat on your chest but it's by the brand dog eared which you i think which you can get at nordstrom i think that's where she got it but i did actually wear this in the wedding and I, I just think it's a beautiful piece of jewelry and I will get a ton of wear out of it because it's very my speed. The other thing, this is kind of maybe a random favorite, but I had some new business cards made and I, if you follow me on Instagram you will have seen this, but I have this good friend who I met in a really serendipitous way. We were actually both interviewing for the same job at a design firm last year and we ended up at a conference together and we found out we both went to the University of Chicago and just had these like weird similarities and uh, we became really fast friends. Her background is in architecture but now she does like brand strategy, um, creative consulting sort of work and she and I have been having these like charrette brainstorming epic sessions for like over a year now and so she helped me design these business cards and she's helping me do some other stuff for my website and she's just an amazing person if any of you are in the market to work with a brand strategist highly recommend my friend Becca um, so I just really love my business cards. We got them printed at Moo, which is actually based in Providence, Rhode Island, so they're local to me. But um, I'll insert close-ups of them, but the cardstock is really, really heavy, and we did gold embossing on for the sacred geometry print on the back of the cards, as well as La More La Musique and Tagline. And all of my all of the cards there's like five or six different background images so there's these hands a sort of a celestial print record vinyl record makeup brushes there's one with like pair of lips i love those there's one a cool one with a paris background where is that So, um, I also did decide that I'm going to Indie Beauty Expo, so if you happen to go and see me there, I would love to give you one of my La More La Musique business cards. I'm just really, really pleased with how they came out. But yeah, look for more new, exciting, La More brand-focused stuff coming up. Um, I have a new tarot deck in my life, which is very, very exciting. It's the... Klimt Tarot. I've been calling it the Golden Tarot of Klimt. I don't know if that's right, but the, these cards are so stunning, you guys. Um, I learned about them because Yogini Tarot here on YouTube will sometimes do her monthly readings using this deck. Can you tell I have a thing for gold embossing? These cards are all gold embossed. They're just so pretty. I need to do like a tarot specific video because there's just like way too much to talk about here. I'm not a tarot expert at all. I'm totally like a tarot neophyte, but I'm, I've been interested in the tarot for, I don't know, probably the last two or three years. And um, the only other deck I have is a traditional Rider weight because I just feel it's sort of like 
the bread and butter of tarot decks, like everybody needs a rider weight. But beyond that, I'm a big proponent of people buying decks that they feel a really strong impulse towards. It's hard to explain, but you'll just jive with the deck more and I, I sort of feel like you'll just get clearer messages either for yourself or if you're doing readings for other people. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just, uh, I need to play around with these more, but I just think that they're so pretty. I, I feel so good even just holding them. It's really weird because I'm a weird energy sensitive person like that. But, um, yeah, I've been very, very happy with this deck. I just got it on Amazon. You can get like everything on Amazon. Okay. I have a little foodie favorite. It's this Birch Benders Paleo Just Add Water Pancake and Waffle Mix. I am obsessed with this stuff. You can get it on Vitacost. I um, was doing sort of like a ketogenic, which is basically paleo or primal way of eating. It's like a whole long story, you guys. It's related to my medical intuitive stuff. It's related to uh, like my health pursuits. I had my medical intuitive check this to make sure it was okay and it was and it's just it's so delicious. There's first of all it's so easy and so delicious. You just do like one serving is a third of a cup of this mix with a quarter cup of water. It makes like two decent sized pancakes and then I put Kerrygold butter on them and maple syrup and it tastes like vanilla cake. It's so so good. The ingredients are really simple. It's cassava flour, coconut flour, almond flour, eggs, uh, baking soda, salt, monk fruit, and spice. And this brand actually makes other mixes. If you just go into Vitacost and search for birch vendors, you can see what else they make. And then as I have been saying, I moved recently and I've been in like decorating mode, house mode. And I wanted to tell you guys about this set of glasses that I just added to my kitchen. And they are by the brand Bromioli. And they're the Bodega glasses. It comes with 12. So they look like this. And I learned about these on Cup of Joe, that blog. I totally remember when I was in Spain several years ago, like these are the kind of glasses that they just drink red wine out of at tapas bars. Um, I just thought they seemed so like European and effortless, which is like totally my vibe. Um, like geeking out over glasses. You know that you've transitioned into another stage of life when you get excited about stuff like this. But I got these on Amazon. Um, they do come in different sizes and yeah they're really affordable and nice and they're made in Spain and I think that's all to tell you about regarding them but obsessed. Okay we are almost there. I have a, a quick YouTube favorite, podcast favorite, and music favorite so I'm gonna go really fast. My favorite YouTube thing that I watched during the month of July, I finally got around to watching Sally Hughes in the bathroom series with I watched well I, wa I watched a bunch but the ones that stuck out to me the most were Wendy Rowe who is the sort of creative makeup artist behind Burberry is it Burberry or Burberry I never actually know the correct pronunciation but anyway she's sort of the creative force behind their makeup line um, her in the bathroom interview was just really inspiring and then the one that blew me away <laughs> was the one with Carolyn Hirons. Now I have loved, followed and loved Carolyn Hirons for years now. In fact, she's kind of, if I had to pinpoint someone in this sphere that I really look up to and would want to sort of like emulate in terms of her diversification in sort of the social media beauty space. You know, she has a really successful YouTube channel, really successful blog. She actually is a trained esthetician and gives facials. She's worked for brands. I mean, she kind of is just like amazing and I want to be her. <laughs> um, and she's also just so funny and down to earth and chill and awesome. Um, her in the bathroom series, particularly part one, where she's just sitting and chatting and telling her backstory, like go watch it because it was inspiring and also I don't know, like, uh, it, it's, it kind of gave me chills in a way because it just demonstrated how, 
you line up with particular experiences at the right time and kind of the beauty of serendipity and coincidences and well not really coincidences but the timing of life matching up to provide you with the right experience for you at the right time so i was just so, so i wish i could have liked that video like a thousand times i just thought it was supremely amazing and then i one of my one of you guys let me know a while ago, probably six plus months ago, about the Well Aware podcasts. And I will listen to them mostly when I'm traveling. I'm not a big podcast listener on the regular, but if I'm traveling, I do like podcasts. So there was one of these podcasts that I listened to while I was traveling that just struck me quite profoundly. And it was the one with Satsumi Shibuya, I think is how you pronounce her name. You've probably, if you are like on Pinterest, um, with any regularity, you probably will have come across some of her art. She's a watercolor artist. I pinned images of her art from years ago and like didn't even know who it was or what was behind it. But basically, if you listen to the podcast, which I highly recommend, um, she's a very spiritual person and she is someone that basically went through a sort of um, textbook, uh, Spiritual Crisis which manifested as a physical issue. She just talks in the podcast about going through that and coming out on the other end of it and sort of embracing her psychic gifts, her energetic gifts, and translating that into her art. And it was just super, super, super beautiful and inspiring. And some of the stuff that she was saying just resonated a lot in terms of something that I've been going through. There was this one point where she talked about needing her life to be very like aspects of her life to be quite simple um so that because she felt like she was deriving more nuance i guess from the same things but it was too getting too muddled um it, this is like hard to explain she talked about it in relation to food where even the food that she eats is very very simple in preparation um, not a lot of spices or not a lot going on because it allows her to really, I guess, kind of be present with or engage with, you know, the really good avocado or the really good olive oil. And it's something that I, I mean, on the one hand, I'm so, I can be so snarky and cynical about that. I'm like, I, in fact, that's what I like wrote my dissertation on basically was like the yuppification of, you know, the food movement and like life in general, really. But there's something to it because I've been experiencing this too. I just need a lot of like quiet and I do find myself gravitating towards simplicity with like with food, but like really with everything. And it is coming from this place of wanting to be more present and engaged with what's in front of you. So that's way more than I wanted to say about that. Basically, go listen to this podcast episode and we can chat in the comments. It's always around this time when I start to get really hot um, and sweaty and I'm like, oh my God, my hair. Music has had uh, just a bit of a, a weird place in my life in the last six months or so. Maybe I'll wax poetic on that at another time. I, I am a huge, huge, huge Sade fan. She's one of my top vocalists, artists, like of all time. And I finally got around to downloading her live 2011 Bring Me Home album, which I highly recommend if you're a Sade fan. But in particular, that version, live version of Cherish the Day has been like the only thing I've been listening to, literally, just on repeat in my car, on the train, you know, whatever. Um, I'm obsessed with it. And it's funny that Cherish the Day is not even, hadn't been one of my top Sade tracks. Um, I mean, I like pretty much everything she's ever done, but I have my favorites, you know? And Cherish the Day was always one that I was just kind of like, yeah, like it didn't really like move me deeply. But this version, oh my gosh, it's so, so good. So, there's actually a YouTube video of her performing it live as well, so I will link that down below for you to go listen to and hopefully bliss out to. So even though I haven't edited this video yet, I have a feeling it may break a record for one of the longest videos on my channel, but I mean, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I had a lot to say. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it to the end of this. I would love to hear what you have been loving lately. Um, you guys just 
I say this all the time, but you're the best audience, you leave me the best comments, you're so engaged, and I'm just so appreciative of you, um, and love having you here. So I'll try and list and link everything below, and until the next one, take care.